Hi there, I am Aman and you are watching PTO classes. So, this is the part 2 of the second chapter uh, from English, The Gift of Chappal. So, let's start our second part of the chapter. Mridu crept up to the window. Lully was sitting a little distance away, awkwardly holding her violin and bowstring. Her elbows jutting out and her eyes glazed with concentration. In front of her, with most of his back to the window, was the bony figure of the music master. So, we see that uh, in the story, till now we have seen that uh, the kids were startled, the kids were, uh, the kids were surprised or shocked by the voice that were the noise that were coming from the uh, ho house and Ravi told Mridu who has uh, come to visit her aunt Rukumani that this noise is coming from Lalli she is playing violin and her music master is teaching her Mridu crept up to the window and she saw that Lalli was sitting inside awkwardly hooking, ho holding she was uh, holding the violin very awkwardly very strangely and bowstring the bowstring that is used to play the violin her elbows jutting out and her eyes glazed with concentration she was trying to concentrate in front of her with most of his body to the wall was sitting the music master he was mostly bald headed and he had a fringe of oiled black hair falling around his ears so the music master was having the fringe of black hair the hair that was uh, that were left on his head because he was uh, mostly bald headed and he had those little hair oiled and uh, those were ra falling around his ears a gold chain glimmed around his leathery neck so a gold chain was around his leathery neck leathery means with lot of wrinkles so uh, he was bony he was very thin and he had one gold chain he was bald and and a diamond ring glittered on his hand so she, he was having a diamond ring on his hand as it glided glided means moved along smoothly up and down the stem of the violin so the ring was also moving with the bowstring on the violin a large foot he was a very he had a very large foot stuck out from beneath his gold bordered vesti vesti is known as dhoti in tamil vesti edge so he was having a very big foot and he was beating time on the floor with this scrawny big toe so you see the word scrawny it was there in the starting that when Mridu saw the big chappals the chappals that were there when Mridu left her own uh, chappals so there was a set of slippers black slippers which had a scrawny toe mark so scrawny means thin very uh, thin so uh, so uh, we can now understand that the slippers belong to this music master he played a few notes. Lully stumbled behind him on her violin. Followed haughtingly means uh, she was trying to catch up with her master, which looked quite helpless and unhappy in her hands. So she was not very used to of playing the violin. What a difference! The music master's notes seemed to float up and settle perfectly into the invisible tracks of the melody. But the music master was uh, playing the violin very well, and it was a different, uh, different game altogether from Nully. It was like the wheels of a train fitting smoothly into the rails and whizzing along, as Ravi said. Ravi was saying that he looked like a train, and Nully was always off the track. Mridu stared at that huge bearing hand. The bearing means he was wearing a diamond ring. So bearing, he was. Uh, so Mridu saw, uh, stared rather the bearing hands that were moving 
effortlessly up the violin's stem, making lovely noise. Just then, squawk, squawk. There was Lully derailing again. So Lully, on the other hand, was playing the violin horribly. Amma came a wail from the gate. Amma, oh, so uh, someone called from the gate. Amma, and Ravi sent that beggar away. Cried his mother from the back veranda, where she was chatting with Tapi. So. Mother was chatting with Tapi, and she said to Ravi that, "Oh, send that beggar off. He has been coming here every day for the past week, and it's time he found another house to beg from." Pati explained to Tapi. So Pati was uh, the grandmother of these kids, the Dadi, and Tapi was the uh, grandmother of of Mridu. Mridu and Meena followed Ravi out. The beggar was already in the garden. So Mridu and Meena followed Ravi. The beggar was already there, making himself quite at home. So he was sitting there in the garden. He had spread his upper cloth under the neem tree and was leaning against its trunk, apparently prepared to take a little snooze while he waited for the arms to appear. Arms means the things that you give to someone. So. He was taking a nap and uh, go away," said Ravi sternly. Sternly, so Ravi said to the uh, to the beggar that "Go away from here." My Pati says it's time you found another house to beg from. So go from here. My Pati doesn't want to give anything to you. The beggar opened his very eyes, his eyes very wide, and gazed at each of the children one by one. So he looked at the children. The ladies of this house, he said, at last, in a voice choked with feeling, are very kind souls. Like you all must have seen the beggar, they always praise you. They always try flattery on you, so you can give them. You would give them the goods. The ladies, he was uh, telling good things about the ladies. He was uh, trying to flatter them that the ladies of this house are all are. Very kind souls. I have kept my body and soul together on their generosity for a whole week. Generosity means daya, to uh, have sympathy, to have empathy for someone. So I am living from on from their uh, from their food or whatever good they give me. I am surviving on that. They are very kind souls. I cannot believe that they would turn me away. So he was saying that I can't believe that they will turn me away. He raised his voice. Amma, oh Amma, said his wail might be, but it certainly was, wasn't feeble. It began to, uh, in a deep, strong rumble somewhere in his withered belly, and came booming out of his mouth with its few remaining teeth stained brown with beetle chewing. So he was looking very, uh, uh, very feeble, very weak. But the voice was very loud, and he said with his beetle chewing. Beetle chewing means he was having, uh, he was chewing some, uh, some, uh, some tobacco, and he said uh, the words while the beetle was coming out of his mouth. Ravi, tell him there's nothing left in the kitchen called Rukkumani. Rukkumani, the aunt, said that tell him that we have nothing left, and he is not to come again. Tell him that. So Rukumani said, "Tell him to go away. We have uh, nothing left to give to him." She sounded fed up. Ravi didn't fed up means tired and unhappy, annoyed. Ravi didn't have to repeat it all to the beggar. What his mother said had been easy for them all to hear. They are under the neem tree. So the beggar heard the aunt and he sat up and said, "I'll go. I'll go." He said wearily. Wearily means tiredly. He said, "I will go from here." Only let me have a rest here under the tree. Let me rest for some time. I will go from here then. The sun is so hot. The tar has melted. Tar, that uh, the tar that we use to make roads, the dhamar, as we say in Hindi, so has melted on the road and it is very hot out there. My feet are already blistered. Blistered means having some bubbles on the skin. Have you seen those? Uh, is when our skin burns. And it uh, takes the shape of the blisters. Uh, in Hindi, we call it chale. 
so he stretched out his feet to show large pink bailing blisters on the soles of his bare feet so he sh uh, showed them that i am very um, very tired and my foot is having blisters so let me rest here i suppose he doesn't have the money to buy chappals mridu whispered to meena ravi he uh, mridu who was a visitor at the house she said i uh, suppose he doesn't have the money to buy the slippers have you got an old pair in the house somewhere she asked her cousins that do you have uh, some old slippers to give to the beggar i don't know said ravi mine are too small to his feet or i would give when uh, i would have given them to him my feet are very small so i would have given my slippers but uh, it is of no use and his feet were larger than mridu and meena's it is very obvious the beggar was shaking out his upper cloth and tightening his dhoti he raised his eyes and looked fearfully at the road gleaming in the afternoon heat so the beggar was uh, looking at the road that he has to cover he he needs something on his feet meena said her big eyes filling it's not fair so the me the girl meena was saying that he needs something to wear on his uh, feet it is not fair for him Shh, said ravi so ravi uh, shushed her ravi uh, tried to shut her up and he said i am thinking about it blubbering it's it's not fair it is not fair isn't going to uh, do anything for him so he said that i am thinking something just saying will not do the thing uh, in 2 minutes he'll be trying his feet on the road what he needs is a pair of chappals so where do we get them come let's search the house he pushed mridu and meena into the house so ravi took mridu and meena with her with him and he said that uh, let's search in the house just as she stepped into the veranda mridu's eyes fell on the old odd looking Uh, chappals she had noticed when she arrived so earlier i have told you that the chappals were there the big black chappals that were having the scrawny uh, footprints so ravi uh, she whispered to him whose chappals are those ravi turned and glanced at the uh, shabby looking but sturdy old slippers he blinked and nodded these are just the right size so he uh, didn't answer meena that whose chappal it was mridu sorry mridu he didn't answer mridu but he said these are just the right size for the beggar mridu and meena followed him nervously back to the garden ravi picked the slippers and the uh, girls followed him back to the garden here said ravi to the beggar dropping the slippers in front of the old man wear these and don't come back so take the slippers and don't come back the next time the beggar stared at the slippers hurriedly flung his towel over his shoulder pushed his feet into them and left so the beggar took the slippers muttering a blessing to the children in a minute he had vanished around the corner of the street so uh, the beggar took the slippers from the kids and he went away the music master came out of the house and took an unappreciative look at the three of them sitting quietly under the tree playing marbles then he searched for his chappals in the veranda where he had put them so the slippers were of the music master as we have seen that music master was also very big footed he was having a big scrawny foot lali he called after a few moments she hurried up to him the kid who was uh, his uh, student he called her and said that have you seen my chappals my dear i remember having kept them here unappreciative was a word we used earlier and it means disapproving okay so let's see what happened next so he asked lali that where his ch chappals were ravi mridu and meena silently watched lali and the music master search every corner of the veranda he scurried around looking over the railing and crouching near the flower pots to look between them so the kids and music master searched the house uh, searched the veranda and the three kids uh, sorry lali was searching with the music master and the three kids ravi mridu and meena were silently looking them doing so brand new they were i went all the way to mount road to buy them he went on saying so he was saying they were brand new chappals they were brand new slippers and i went to mount road to buy them they cost a whole month's fees do you know so he was threatening lali that they were very costly they cost uh, around the same amount that your one month's fee is soon lali went to tell her to mother 
Rukumani appeared looking harassed with Pati following her. So Rukumani was embarrassed by the scene and she came with Pati. Where could they be? It's really quite upsetting to think someone might have stolen them. So she was saying that uh, it is very upsetting that someone have stolen those chappals. So many vendors come to the door worried Pati. Pati was thinking that so many people come to the house. So someone might have taken the slippers. Rukumani caught sight of Ravi, Ritu and Meena. So Rukumani was having suspicions over the three kids sitting under the tree. Have you children? She began and then seeing they were curiously quiet went on more slowly. Curious, uh, curiously meaning uh, having the curiosity, having the, uh, uh, the quietness that was very curious. Uh, seen anyone lurking around the veranda? She asked them that have you seen anyone lurking here? Lurking means um, uh, wailing quietly without getting attraction. Someone hiding here and there and searching for the things to steal. A sharp V-shaped line had formed between her eyebrows. Another straight. So she was staring with a with raised eyebrows. Tighter one appeared in place of her usually soft pleasant mouth. So she was uh, g uh, noticing the changes in kids activities and she was getting that they are responsible for this mischief. She wouldn't be so upset if she knew about the poor beggar with sores on his feet. She tried to tell herself. So Mridu was very um, very afraid of her aunt. She was shivering and she tried to calm herself that if we tell her about the beggar's uh, blisters, she would not be so annoyed. Taking a trip deep breath she cried rukumani there was a beggar here poor thing he had such boils on his feet so she told everything to rukumani so rukumani so said uh, rukumani that so what you gave the music master's chapel to the old beggar who turns up here children these days groaned pati pati said that children what they have become amma didn't you tell me about karna who gave away everything he had even his gold earrings. He was so kind and generous. So the kids were saying, Amma, you, you told her the story about Karn who gave everything he had. Um, so he was very kind. So we also did the same. Silly, snapped Rukumani. Aunt said, you're very silly. Karn didn't give away other people's thing. He only gave his own. So the chappas were not yours to give. But my chappas wouldn't have fitted the beggar's feet, Ravish said that my chappals were very small. And Amma, if they did fit, would you really not have minded? If I would have given, would you have not minded? Ravi said Rukumani, very angry now. Go inside in a minute. So she was scolding Ravi. She hurried indoors and brought out Gopu Mama's hardly worn new chappals. So Gopu Mama's chappals were brought and Rukumani brought Gopu Mama's chappal. And these should fit you, she said to the music master. So please put these on, take the chappals and uh, take the chappals of Gopu Mama, put them on. I am so sorry, my son has been very naughty, she said. The music master's eyes lit up. He was very happy. He was, uh, he cheered in a moment. He put them on, trying not to look too happy. So he tried to, uh, tried to hide his happiness because, you know, his chappals were old. The ones that were uh, being uh, given to him were new ones. So he was trying to hide his happiness that I am getting a new one. I should not uh, have this look on my face so that they know that I was having old chappals and now I am getting new ones. Well, I suppose these will have to do. So he said, I suppose that these will be fine with me. These days children have no respect for elders. What to do? A Hanuman incarnate, only Rama can save such a naughty fellow. So he was saying that uh, um, uh, Ram, Lord Ram can only save such naughty fellows. These days children have become so bad. So he was saying these things. Rukumani's eyes flashed. She didn't seem to like Ravi being called a monkey. So uh, he was saying that uh, Ravi is a human, Hanuman incarnate, he is a He's a avatar of Hanuman and Lord Ram's Bhakt Hanuman. So he was comparing to a monkey. So uh, Rukumani didn't like that. 
even a holy monkey she would not like her son to be called that she stood stiff and straight by the front door it was clear she wanted him to leave quickly so she uh, showed by her gestures that please go from here she was annoyed that her son being called a monkey when he had clattered clattered means gone off noisily with noise of chappals he was uh, going with making so much noise of the new chappals he clattered off with his new chappals uh, Mridu, come in and have some tiffin. So, pa, the aunt Rukumani called Mridu that have some tiffin. Honestly, how do you children think of such things? So, now the aunt said that honestly, how you children come with such things? Thank God your Gopu Mama doesn't wear his chappals to work. Thank God Gopu Mama don't wear the, doesn't wear the chappal to his work. As he walked towards the kitchen with Mridu and Meena. So Rukumani while going to the kitchen, she said that thank God Gopu Mama doesn't wear the chappals to his office. She suddenly began to laugh. So she started laughing. But he is always in such a hurry to throw off his shoes and socks and get into his chappals as soon as he comes home. So she laughed that uh, Gopu Mama, he doesn't wear the chappals to office. But whenever he comes back home, he search for his chappals very firstly. What is your mama going to say this evening when I tell him I have given his chappals to the music master? So here our story ends. So music master was happy with his new chappals because he had the old ones. Beggar was happy because he got slippers to wear and Gopu mama was left without a pair of chappals. So this was your story. Hope you have understood. If you have any doubts, you can write on the comment section. I will provide you the next set of questions related to the chapter. I have already given you the PDF of the first part. Uh, in that, I have given you word meanings and few questions. Now, I am going to give you the rest of uh, questions and you will do them in your fair notebook. So, this is Aman. You are watching PTO classes. Thank you so much for listening. Please do like the videos, subscribe to my channel and have fun. Thank you so much.